Three. Now people have started joining. Yes, sir. Maybe One. that sir. link. Sir, we are live now. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Rishi. And welcome everybody sir, to Maharishi. Sorry, Maharishi. Yeah, we are we are two people, sir. Rishi and Maharishi. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Okay. okay, good evening, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar. Uh, brought to you by the Orthopedic Research and Education Foundation India. It's a pleasure to have with us again Dr. Vikash Agashe from Hinduja Hospital, Mumbai. And he's going to be discussing some interesting cases which are going to be interactive. Yeah. And uh, all of you know him well by now and he doesn't need any uh, formal invitation, uh, sort of uh, either introduction or invitation. And so... I would welcome Vikash to uh, get started with his uh, case discussion series. So, Vikash. Good evening, all. Uh, can you see my slides? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, this is going to be an interactive session. And uh, can you all hear me? Yes, sir. Here. We can hear you. Please there's someone, some audio. background. I'll just. So there's some background noise coming. So maybe they should switch it on when they speak. Yes, sir. So please put on your audio as well as video. I would like to see facial expressions on your face. So please put on your video as well. Yes. I think uh, anyone else? Rajiv Gupta. Yeah, Rajiv sir is also there. Subhan Shu. Shuvansu. Ravi Kumar. Please put on your videos and audios. Yeah, Rajiv sir is there. Then Shubhansu. Sir, I am at outside, sir. I will turn out turn out my okay. So shall we start? I think yes, Ravi Kumara is not yet mm, yeah. on his video. Okay, just get started. Don't worry, Vikash. Yes. Okay. Maybe. So, uh, this was a young boy who presented one year after ACL reconstruction. One year after ACL reconstruction with fever, severe pain. And you can see there is a distinct swelling in the thigh. So, it developed swelling six months after ACL reconstruction. He was treated somewhere else with incision and drainage at about 10th month. The culture was negative. Histopathology was not done. And empirically, he was on IV piperazine and tazobactam for three weeks. And his symptoms continued, so he approached our facility. So this is his MRI presentation. You can see there is a distinct thigh abscess. There is a femoral tunnel osteomyelitis. While the knee per se doesn't seem to be really infected as well as the TBL tunnel. So we explored. You can see there is significant pus coming in, did debridement, scraped the tunnel, removed the implants. And the lab report was AFB positive, mm -hmm. expert negative. Five days the culture was negative. And the craziest granuloma suggestive of mycobacterial etiology. That was the histopathology. So, should we start for drug ATT or wait for the culture? So, anyone? Subhanshu, Ravi Kumar. Yes, Rajan is also there. Rajan? Rajan. I can't ask Maharushi, I think. <laughs> 
So how long does it take? How long, to do, uh, how, start how long does it take for your culture report to approve? Generally, three weeks to six weeks. Three, three weeks is six. when uh, 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 Mijet comes in, and six weeks when LJ comes in. Okay. Yeah. Anyone? Should we start four drug ATT? Yes, sir. I have uh, received one response from Rajan ah. to start with ATT. Start. Anyone else? Subhau Shu? Yes. yes. Sir, start with ATT, sir. ATT. Okay. Now, this is another case. 42 year old man presented with excruciating pain in the right hip joint since three months. Fever, toxic patient. WBC high, ESR high, 15,000 WBC, ESR 100. And that's the X-ray and MRI. You can see loss of joint space, destruction of femoral head and acetabulum and huge collection, right? Obviously, infective arthritis. So, I'm tracing the history. He had dull pain in the hip for one year. Dull pain. MRI was inconclusive. He was otherwise an active patient. He used to visit, go out of India almost once or twice a month. He was a diamond merchant, so therefore he was moving around. So that was absolutely possible, but he had dull pain. So he wanted to find the cause. And uh, since MRI was inconclusive, his MR arthrogram was done. <laughs> this is just a representative picture. One month after arthrogram, he had exacerbation of hip pain, started getting fever. He was on empirical antibiotics and there was no improvement. Then CT guided aspiration was done. Smear was positive for AFB. Histopathology was granulomatous infection. He was started on conventional four drug ETT and at three weeks, MTB was isolated. All this at a different different uh, facility. He had no relief. He had fever, severe pain, and the lab somehow would not give him sensitivity report. They kept on going there and going there and going there. And after about another month, normally in about a week's time, 10 days, you would get sensitivity report. After a month, they gave a report as no growth of MTB. So first they had given a report of MTB as positive and then they dilly-dallied for a month and then gave a report as no growth for MTB. Why? And I'm coming to the third case now. We'll discuss these three cases together. This is another young man presented in 2004. He had severely infected wound over left arm. He had open comminuted fracture humerus for following a farmland injury. And he was untreated for six days. So I did extensive debridement. You can see here, extensive debridement, did an external fixator. But his, and his culture was staff with gram-negative bacilli, which correlates with the farmland injury. And started on Genta, Ciprofloxacin, and Coamaxosclave. But despite my very extensive debridements, the infection did not settle. He just kept on pouring and pouring and pouring. So at four weeks, I did a histopathology, which was again suggestive of mycobacterial etiology. So I felt now I must start ATT. And I just happened to meet our microbiologist in our canteen. We're having lunch. I said that, I have got a TB after open fracture. And she almost threw a fit. She said, don't do anything. Don't start ATT. Wait for some time. I will do extended cultures. Why? So these are three cases, similar cases. What is the similarity in these three cases? Now, can you spot the diagnosis? So, are these atypical mycobacterial infections or something else? Correct. These are non 
mycobacterial infections earlier called atypical okay so these are non 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 tubercular mycobacteria non tuberculous mycobacteria so all these had mycobacterial infection but following a direct inoculation they had break in skin surface either due to wound or injection or procedures so any mycobacterial infection which has occurred bef after a skin injury or rather other a break in skin surface is likely to be non tubercular mycobacteria so what are non tubercular mycobacteria can anyone tell me yes so manzu yeah unmute That's yourself you. first yeah yes the mycobacterium bovis okay uh my, and there is my uh there is three types uh one is photos photosensitive Good. that's sir uh naam yaad photochromogens photochromogens yes sir but then what are they so essentially most Agilect. of the mycobacteria are Lepra, mycobacterium yeah. tuberculosis complex and mycobacterium leprae they form 95 98% of mycobacteria and the remaining are called non tubercular mycobacteria and there are more than 170 species of them there is a huge huge spectrum of non tubercular mycobacteria so let's go back to the cases so you can see this was a case which i did extensive debridement he would just won't improve won't improve won't improve so the the cultures at third day or fourth day had picked this up and we were happy that we have isolated the organisms but since he was not improving i did histopathology and then the id specialist said this is a farm line injury so probably some either fungal or actinomycal infection but once this happened he said this is very very likely to be non tubercular mycobacteria so obviously should not should not start anti tb drugs the microbiologist said i will not discard this culture but continue it till extended period and at 12th day he grew rapidly growing mycobacteria or non tubercular mycobacteria called mycobacterium fortutum so there is a type called rapidly growing or rapid growers in these non tubercular mycobacteria so we started we manage the id specialist i had not, that was the first time i came across non tubercular mycobacteria honestly till then i didn't even know the existence of that so once you you know more than what i knew at that time <laughs> so wound improved within 10 days of modifying antibiotics and uh, we gave antibiotics for 6 months this is one year follow up excellent clinical healing and range of movement the second case now this is still more interesting we did suspect non tubercular mycobacteria and something very important is smear is afb positive and gene expert is negative so what does that signify i would say this itself clinches the diagnosis of non tubercular mycobacteria so in 24 hours or 6 hours maybe most of the cases you should be able to say that this is non tubercular mycobacteria why yes pratyush and mute yourself pratyush and subhansu subhansu you are able to answer so uh, how know. many bacilli are needed for smear to become positive for positive smear how many bacilli are needed is 10 raised to 6 or 10 raised to 5 or 6 so yes. you need 
huge, huge numbers. While for gene expert, you need just 10 raised to 2. So about 100 per ml, you will be able to pick up gene expert. But gene expert is specific for mycobacterium tuberculosis. Gene expert is negative in, in other bacteria. So if gene expert needs only 10 raised to 2 or say 100 bacilli, you have a positive smear. That means you have bacilli 10 raised to 5. But still, gene expert is negative. That means this cannot be mycobacterium tuberculosis. So that itself should indicate that we are dealing with non-tubercular mycobacteria. So immediately, and then the history. We have intervention of uh, arthroscopy. So obviously, we are dealing with, with uh, non-tubercular mycobacteria. So we started empirically on MTB therapy, but this is at two weeks. You can see the wound is not healthy at all. Pain and fever persisted. And later on, he again grew culture, fortutum, but he was resistant to clarithromycin. So these, these are the different drugs that are usually used for, for non-tubercular mycobacteria. And many of them are resistant to many drugs. So in short, his diagnosis was missed for one year. And the moment we modified this, amicacin, trimethoprem, sulfamethaxazole, and doxycycline, the symptoms resolved in just 10 days. And this is uh, at uh, about eight months. And this is at four years. No pain, full range of movement, and no evidence of infection. So, uh, Vikas, the only, uh, yeah. only thing was here in the histology, you had caseation. Yes. So it is often said that caseation does not occur in non-tubercular mycobacteria. Yeah, so that's but what you more have. and more papers are coming in where they say it can be there. Okay. So it, the, the granulomatous infection, caseous as well as non-caseous can be there in non-tubercular mycobacteria. So it can be almost indistinguishable from, from tuberculosis from uh, MTB on histopathology. And what about the histo, the so-called histiocytes, which are supposed to be typical of tuberculosis? Uh, again, it is generally, you hardly ever see them. Oh, epithelioid, epithelioid, epithelioid cells. Epi again, uh, so many times the histopathologist Generally, she is granulomatous infection. Just, and then gives a report of mycobacterial etiology. So, it is said that it is almost indistinguishable, uh, both, both these. And you go by history, you go by uh, smear and uh, uh, gene expert. And of course, I am coming to the next thing. So, let's go to the third case. We are here up to lab, did not give sensitivity report for three weeks and finally gave a report of MTB not grown. So the funny thing about these are they grow in aerobic culture as well as TB culture. Now they grow on midget. They don't, generally don't grow on LZ. So they grow on midget and they Microbiologists have to do another test called NAP test or some molecular test to differentiate between, between MTB and NTM. So if that is not done, very often it is not done. Widget grown, they give a report. And they put it for its uh, sensitivity. And at that time, they realize that, oh, this is not MTB. And that is why they delete allele and gave this report. So, MTB picks up both MTM and MTB. Sorry, midget. Yeah, uh, uh, can you tell me what is midget? Uh, so, 
सर इट इज अ कल्चर मीडिया विच इज स्पेशली यूज फॉर ट्यूबर क्लॉसिस माइकोबैक्टीरियम ट्यूबर क्लॉसिस माइकोबैक्टीरियम ग्रोथ इंडिकेटर ट्यूब पिक्स अप इन अबाउट टेन डेज टू थ्री टू वीक्स इट इज अ लिक्विड मीडियम एटोमेटिक मीडियम डज नॉट नीड रेडियो एक्टिविटी वेल बैक्टेक नीड सम रेडिएशन देन इट पिक्स अप माइकोबैक्टीरियम ट्यूबर क्लोसिस कॉम्प्लेक्स विच इज टीबी बोवेस then uh, i keep forgetting but there are four in that mycobacterium tuberculosis complex while lz grows later it's a solid medium it takes 6 to 8 weeks that's our conventional tb medium but it is more sensitive to mtb so sometimes mijet may be negative but lz will be positive and it is considered as positive that is why all labs will give you a first report at 3 weeks but they will not declare it as mtb growth uh, sorry not growth they will say i will give you a final report at 6 weeks so only when lz does not grow they will give a report so that's the difference between mijet and lz so mijet picks up both these and it needs further processing to identify ntm and uh, mtb so that's the history so again there is a breach in skin there is a procedure injection given this is most likely to be non tubercular mycobacteria so so in this case this time he uh, came to us his head was destroyed and he was in excruciating pain so you can see the head was destroyed so uh, vikash in this case what do you think it was before the injection was given uh, he had some labral injury that's all so it was that's all that's all he just had dull pain he was doing everything but a typical tha mere ko malum mangta hai kya hai mere ko so that is why they did an arthrogram mm -hmm. and he got infected post arthrogram so this was a poor post definitely post arthrogram infection Which was mycobacteriology? Did he need an MR arthrography rather than just a contrast enhanced MR? No, they did MR arthrography. Ah, but that's what I'm saying. Did he really need that for for a labral tear? You should be able to. No, this was this was almost ten years ago. Okay, before that. they didn't have those sequences then. Right. Yeah. So you can see the destroyed head, and then we had to excise his head. So keeping this in mind, and remember, whenever you are suspecting NTM infection, that is why you must always inform microbiologist. Baba jara dekho, this could be NTM. And we grew Mycobacterium chelone, another. rapidly growing mycobacteria now we referred him to a pulmonologist because or tb specialist because tb tb <laughs> and he started him on amikacin 3 days a week clarithromycin and linezolid despite this the fulminant inf infection did not resolve for 3 months the sinus persisted i continued to do debridement and debridement and debridement kuch nahi ho gaya <laughs> so the tb specialist said are baba abhi infection specialist ko bata do so he changed this from 3 week 3 thrice a week to 5 times a week continued these two and added clofazamine <laughs> and also said insisted rather that you must have a source control before these things will start working so again did a, a aggressive debridement <coughs> putting in beads and within two weeks his wound improved and we could close well 
She said two years after completion of treatment. And we were really, really scared of doing a joint. And so you can see at two years, there is a tremendous overriding. And at two years, he insisted on a joint. So this was done by Vivek Shetty, Dr. Shetty. And this is after seven months, no recurrence. Now, what would I do differently today is spacer instead of beads, early arthroplasty, because it was extremely challenging to do arthroplasty because there was very severe fibrosis and overriding of trochanter. So friends, remember non-tubercular mycobacterial infection is a multi-speciality management case. They grow in mold, all mycobacteria grow in mold-like fashion. They're acid fast, cannot be stained by gram stain. And myco is fungus. And that is why they are called fungus-like things. The manifestations of NTM are osteomyelitis, septic arthritis, post-joint replacement, soft tissue infections, and they can have lumbar, lumbar spinal abscesses. Post-arthroscopy infections are quite common. And as I said, some break is needed. So what is the similarity? This we discussed at length and, uh, and, uh, and most important is they do not respond to standard ATT. So they are not resistant uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis, but they just do not respond. There are varied protocols and it's a great challenge for ID specialists to tailor regime for these. Now, how common are they? Now, this was a report from uh, a very good lab from South India. 1295 extra pulmonary specimens of suspected TB and 189 cultures positive for M MTB and 72, as many as 72 for M MTM. So, almost you can see that the culture yield as it is is poor of MTB, but here you have almost 72 NTM specimens. Why does this happen? Because they are ubiquitous in nature. They are generally there in water as well as soil. So almost 300 samples were collected from Agra and there were as many as 120 isolates of MTM collected from, from soil and water. And therefore, wherever there is soil contamination or wherever there is a water contamination, remember that this could be NTM infection. Now, this, these are becoming very common because the in, immunocompromised people are improving, increasing. Clinical awareness has increased. Technology has improved and most important is there is a long-term use of immunosuppressant drugs. So all these lead to more and more cases of, of uh, non-tubercular mycobacteria. And uh, is it common in immunocompromised individuals in developed countries? Yes, but not in Asian population. So our study had six, zero out of six. And another study from China, only 2 of 25 had immunocompromised state. Now, as uh, I think who said that there are various classifications, there are slow growers and rapid growers. Now, <coughs> the treatment is different for them. The duration is different. For skin and soft tissue lesions, four months. For bone and joint infection, rapid growers for six months and slow growers for as many as 14 months. <laughs> and this slow growers is bad news. Absolute bad news. So uh, this was a middle-aged person had discharging sinus. You can see 
multiple discharging sinuses for eight months. He didn't have much pain. He had surgery for <coughs> tibia one year ago. You can see there's a distinct non-union. So he had lower third tibia fracture. Mepo plating was done. He developed SSI at one month. Three months down the line, implant removal was done. The culture was pseudomonas. Discharge persisted in spite of antibiotics, weeks of antibiotics. And when he presented to us at about a year, you can see there is signals here, but also there are signals at proximal screw site here. So the ID input was kuch to gadbade. Kuch to gadbade. He has multiple sinuses. Not much pain. Uh, Pseudomonas was grown, but he did not have response to culture-specific antibiotic in spite of implant removal. So are we missing an additional microbe? So friends, can you tell me any other reason why his infection could have persisted? Sir, he may be diabetic, sir. No, he was not. Any other reason? So you have poor soft tissue there. And poor soft, soft water, tissue. Water cell area. Yes. Soft anything else. Vascularity would be poor. Yes, anything. Mm. So remember, whenever you have done MIPO, and there is infection. You cannot remove the plate by minimally invasive technique. Because very often the fracture site is infected. And unless you take a full incision, you will not be able to do aggressive debridement. Invariably, invariably you will realize that if you just do a MIPO and take out the plate, the middle portion remains infected. The middle portion. That is why your implant removal, implant insertion may be by MIPO. The surgery for plate removal for infection has to be full open. You need to do it. You need to do medullary scraping and you must scrape the proximal and distal abnormal signal sites. So this was the incision we took. You can see there was a granulation tissue here. And again, here you can see a classic granuloma. Can you see that? At the proximal screw site. Frozen section was granulomatous infection. So considering all this, the, the ID specialist said that this is very likely to be NTM infection. And uh, we would definitely start NTM treatment. Now this is post removal you can see the we have applied back and um, there was a thing that i would do differently here i said that this was a long oblique stroke spiral fracture and uh, i would prefer to put a plate now here we could distally we could just about close the skin I was really scared that if I put the plate, it is likely to get infected. So I told, uh, insisted the my the plastic surgeon that I would like to have a good big flap there, good big flap, so that I can put a plate comfortably. So this was the. The antibiotic started and the plastic surgeon did a flap and unfortunately the flap got necrosed. <laughs> the flap got necrosed and I tell you, two days none of us slept. I swear, I didn't know how to face the patient. Fortunately, he supported us. He said, Dr. Sahib, kuch to tarika hoega. Kuch to hoega, aap kyo gabarte? Karalo kuch bhi. In fact, 
that is when you are under more stress. So he has put everything in you. He has put all the faith in you. So we excise this bone. Telegraph. No. We did uh, just a local flap there. Okay. And split thickness graph. We put uh, stimulan inside and six weeks down the line. So the, the ID specialist said that before doing any kind of metal inside, you wait till the culture report. And <coughs> six weeks down the line, he grew slow-growing non-tubercle microbacteria, slow-growing NTM. And that is an extremely bad news. Can anybody tell me why? This, I think, you must not be knowing. The reason is, at least in India, you can't do sensitivity of non uh, slow growers. We don't have those kits anywhere in India. So it is all by andaj. It, they often need some ATT. The duration is 14 months to 20 months. Most of the antibiotics have a lot of side effects. So it is absolute hell to give treatment. You really don't know whatever antibiotics you are giving are actually going to act or not. So the ID person said that no metal under any condition. No metal under any condition. So this is where we are. Flap is healthy. And uh, she, the ID said nothing doing. No implant. Now, these are the antibiotics modified after knowing MTB. So, we gave him a PTB. Now, I have a flap. Remember, we have a flap which has increased the blood supply locally. So, it is very likely that you will have some fracture healing. And here you can see at two months, we have a decent callus. There is a decent, I wouldn't say good, but decent stability. And then we opened this and used a tricortical strut, made slots proximally and distally, and punched the tricortical struts as if they are actually they were actually giving support. So they gave a lot of stability. And this is immediate post-op. This is at uh, this thing consolidating at 8 months, good range of movement, and this is at 14 months. We stopped antibiotics at 14 months. And uh, finally, this was the end of story of a extremely stressful case. So NTM, consider them any chronic infection, localized disease, history of penetrating trauma or intervention, and not responding to antibiotics or ATT. Think of NTM. In short, whenever, when would you do test for MTB or NTM? Whenever we are dealing with any osteoarticular infection, do everything. This is what I have started doing. Whether it is, whether it is absolutely apparently classic post-op infection, even then. I have started doing aerobic, anaerobic, fungal, TB. It is very expensive, but it is more expensive to not to grow culture. We did this as a, as a thesis topic of 600, 206 patients, a prospective study, and our culture yield was close to 88%. But in these 204, six cases, we had 262 isolates, but the worst thing was we had 13 cases of fungi, four cases of NTM, and close to 50% of multi-drug resistant cases. So it is much more expensive if you do not get the culture yield. So that is what we have resorted. And this is a great threat to public health, especially in our country. Why? Our country, almost world over. Any questions? Sir, uh, 
just one or two questions, sir. One thing uh, you have shown for this type of uh, mycobacteria, yeah. uh, you have shown mostly it is uh, three drugs. Like one is the clarithromycin, nemicacin, and linazolate. So that is okay, so sir, to start with. Trimethoprim and also one of the So there are about 14 drugs that are generally used for these cases. So the ID specialist, first and foremost, no oh. orthopedic surgeon should yeah. ever think of treating non-tubercular mycobacterial infections. Money start antibiotics for NTM. Don't even think about it. Number two. It is a challenge for ID people also. There are 14 drugs. What to give? How to give? What should be the combination? How long to give? Are all extremely challenging. The Most of them have significant side effects. So it has to be tailored for every case. And sir, uh, you have shown wherever there is dose of amicacin, it is written one gram OD. So that is the norm, sir. There is a high dose. High dose and in single, single yes. dose. Yes, one single dose. Single yes. dose. Yes, sir. Is and, there a uh, reason for that? I don't. I have not bothered to find, ask. So because normally we use amicacin 500 milligram BD. Yes. Correct. Correct. Uh, but generally they give uh, one gram OD for these conditions and that also for five days a week Not so, yeah. because the toxicity because it has to be given for a long time and toxicity is incidence of toxicity is very high and once they become uh, they have kidney problems or uh, deafness yeah. you are in big trouble so, so you, uh, you continue the amicacin for the uh, duration of the treatment no generally two months okay so uh, recently, our microbiologist also suggested one gram of amicacin in single dose. Uh, whenever we are for which case? Yeah. So that is why for, our people yeah. are also doing Almost. that. But I didn't try to ask them. Jana <laughs> Dodi, it is not okay. for us. Should be working. Okay, we will con confirm it, sir. Uh, and sir, uh, you have shown that uh, these types types of mycobacterium is due to direct inoculation. Is that okay? It's always sir. No, no. Generally, whenever yeah. you have, in the sense, the converse is not true. It can cause, in say, lumbar spine abscesses, etc., without any inoculation. But whenever you have a mycobacterial infection, post inoculation or post surgery or post injection, then Suspect it is one. most likely to be non tubercular. You need to chase that. In fact. There are many where cultures have not grown, but we have treated based on the history and histopathology with these NTM drugs and that has worked. So uh, I think Vikash, in that uh, study from the South, you showed that out of more than a thousand cases, there were only a hundred and odd or 200 odd, which were picked up as mycobacterial cultures. Correct. Is that a normal uh, percentage or a ratio or do you normally pick up much more than that? Yes. Now, this study was published in 2016 or something like that or 15. And the study period was almost 10 years before that. Rather, starting from 10 years to about 4 years before that. Now, the uh, collection methods were really not standardized then. This lab was a, a referral lab where they could not control the sample, how the sample was collected. And that is what they have mentioned also, okay. that the culture yield was poor because we could not control the quality of sample. And they very strongly recommended that the way samples are collected, stored and transported should be standardized should improve. So this was essentially a tertiary lab where other labs also would send. So would send. So that you don't know what happened in between. So that is why, that is why this. But then, I mean, it, one very important thing came out of that was this. 
that you I must mean, collect. For a long time, people were collecting swabs and sending for uh, MTB culture. Or they would collect and pour liter of saline into that and send for that. So the how to collect sample is very, very important. And the, the, this study brought that, uh, that it was only about 10%. But if you read papers uh, till about 2018 or 2019, most of the Indian studies would say that TB culture yield is up between 10 to 20 percent. There's a big lobby from North who would say that uh, diagnosis of TB, osteoarticular TB is clinical radiological. Collect sample only when you are in doubt. That has changed now. Uh, in last two, three years. But for a long, long time, people would say that it is not possible to have a good culture yield. So, uh, so the way we should collect the culture, what please guide for the junior yeah. sir. Yes. So, uh, what we generally do is decide from where we are going to take cultures, number one. Number two is the on the table you should have four or five sterile leak proof containers keep a sterile paper usually we use apna glow ka, you know that white paper of glow and and number these containers one two three four five six and write down one two three four five six on the paper also so as the surgeon starts collecting samples, you start making notes from where you have collected samples. So first is generally we take skin incision, excising the sinus. Do not collect samples from the sinus. Excise the sinus and go deeper, preferably up to bone and excise the entire thing. Send it for histopathology. That would be Sample number one for histopathology and put in formalin. Then the, the, there would be, it is likely that there is no sinus. In that case, we take skin incision and after skin incision, we put a needle for aspiration so that we don't even contaminate that needle with, with skin bacteria and collect using a 10, uh, sorry, 18 gauge needle, aspirate, put part of it in that uh, uh, sample 2 or sample whatever it may be and use Bactec bottles which are for, uh, for liquid medium. They are essentially blood, uh, uh, blood culture bottles. If the patient is on antibiotics for a long time, you have to inform the lab, then they will give you a, a different type of bactic where the the there is a sedimentation etc mm -hmm. etc and the culture yield will be more so inject into bactic the bactic bottle is not supposed to be opened it has, it is a vacuumized bottle so the it just sucks your your liquid in the in the bottle do not ever open the culture, the bactic bottle so whatever pus you get, you inject into Bactic as well as collect in your second sample. Then as you start exploring, you will have, suppose you have an implant. Just consider that you have an implant. Then collect granulation tissue above the implant also. Put that in the, in the sample of which has some pus so that you don't have to put any additive. Otherwise, if you just collect granulation tissue, it generally becomes dry and the yield is poor. Take out the implant. Then you will have a biofilm underneath the implant. Take that off with <coughs> using an osteotope. Collect that as bottle number three and write down biofilm under the implant. <laughs> then you will approach the fracture site if it is non-union and then Take out that sample as well as sample from the medullary cavity. Put it as sample number four. Then scrape the 
scrap the screw holes if any or in an interlocking nailing you may have some screw screw there take out that sample again name is number 5 now like joint replacement to send five samples is financially impossible no patient would spend so much money so we do cheat we do cheat and combine these samples into one or two this technically probably incorrect but it is impossible for patient to have <coughs> these five samples with all these tests so we compromise on samples but combine these but every time you must know if you feel that the characteristic of pus is different then we do send them separately but otherwise we combine them but do all these tests so it is expensive to avoid negative culture but it is far more expensive if you are not able to avoid culture negative culture because as i said 50% of our bugs were mdr they were 13 out of 206 fungi isolated where we had never dreamt of fungus yeah i so, think it's back to the uh, situation where uh, when you use an implant and you use a poor quality implant saying it costs less and then you look at the cost of failure it's a lot more so correct 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 so uh, so when we are suspecting a tuberculosis then we used to send the lj like uh, and then the pcr in gene expert and uh, gram stain as well as if uh, AFB. Correct. So, uh, so now you should also send for non-tubercular mycobacteria. So you just have to mention, mention that it. look for non-tubercular mycobacteria. These are not different cultures per se. Yeah. But you should always also send for aerobic anaerobic cultures. Because many aerobic and anaerobic bacteria may simulate TB and we have had on an average 10% of suspected TB growing other things. Sure. Or a non-tuberculous diagnosis. So I think uh, we'll be uh, last round of questions from any of the DNB people or the delegates or the sort of uh, people attending the webinar. Otherwise, uh, thank you very much, Vika. It was excellent. I think... Uh, Thank you. I enjoyed today's program. And uh, there's a lot to learn from that and many things that we need to inculcate into our practice in the future so as not to miss these uh, sort of uh, increasing incidence of these infections, really. I think okay. this is the important thing to note is that these infections, although they were very rare initially, they are increasing. And we really need to detect them early to be able to treat them appropriately. Okay, so thank you very much, Vikash. And Hello, bye. Enjoy. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. I think bye. Thank you very much. Sir. Throat is also giving you trouble, so I don't want to tax you for too long. <laughs> Sorry. I think your throat is also. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Go get a goggle or a. <laughs> yes. yes. Right. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Probably brandy. Connect. Yeah, that would be better. <laughs> Unfortunately, in Bihar, we can't partake of Oh, it. yes. I know. You can't even say that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, bye. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you very much, sir. Bye, Thank you, bye, sir. Janki. Thank you very much, sir. Bye. Bye.